it's about time I fixed another one of my old basic games. And the one which has been nagging at me for a while is Velocity. See, Velocity has kind of lain dormant for a long time, because with no classroom full of computers packed full of students over a rainy lunchtime, I don't have anyone to play it against. You know, the dogs aren't great racing game opponents. And, you know, that lack of anyone to play against is literally the only problem with this game. There's absolutely nothing else which would stop me from playing it in 2023. Oh, all right, fine. The tracks could probably be a bit more interesting. These rally ones are a bit cheap. So what I'm going to do is take this clunky, obtuse mess of a game and turn it into something playable, with rudimentary AI for the enemy cars. That's despite never having programmed a game AI in my life. Yeah, this really is. Timberwolf spends a load of time incorrectly explaining how to add AI to an old basic game, almost certain to be one of the internet's most valuable and useful tutorials. So prepare to lose 20 minutes skipping through trying to find the 5 seconds which explain what you need, as we indulge in more videos which could have been blog posts. No, wait, QBasic Rescue, that's what I was calling this. I think there was a point we were actually trying to entice people to watch this channel, and you know, it's, it's really not a tutorial, it's, it's just me doing some basic programming, right? Before I get into anything else, Velocity needs to be stripped back to just the essentials. All of these multiple modes, pointless screens where I just wanted to show off a scrolling marquee and all that code to pretend a shared hard disk is a network. Time for the bin. And early on in that binning I hit the first problem I want to correct. The game stores all of its cars as data statements, but then draws them to the screen to capture them as sprites. And also each different car in each different direction has its own variable, with a massive if statement inevitably somewhere in there. I guess. It's time to replace all of that with a single big array, which means all of these separate put up, put down, and so on functions can be replaced with a single put statement. And if I change this direction indicator from a string to an integer, I don't need separate methods at all. It can all be done with simple multiplication. And if this seems like I spent most of my first few hours with this code on tiny incremental improvements, then yes, you are correct. This was supposed to be about adding AI to my old game, but I kept nerd stiping myself by discovering new improvements I needed to make. Playing the game and finding it doesn't always register presses of the acceleration key? Well, let's write our own keyboard handler, because QBasic's inky dollar statement, well, it do be like that sometimes. And further temptation to fiddle abounds in Velocity's simplistic physics. But this is kind of a nice little system. Whenever the player changes direction, their car continues to move in the old direction for a little bit using a skid velocity which decays each tick. It's simple, but effective. Well done, past me. Because I really like how the game plays with those little slides every time you change direction. On the downside, it is a bit glitchy, and using the screen coordinates directly doesn't give us much precision to fix that. So with the notion of a nice short video about adding AI receding into the distance while I get lost down a side road, I take more time changing it to use virtual coordinates, with each pixel on the screen representing 10 internal units, and then play around with that system until I've got something that feels nice. It's still the same old system under there. I don't want to mess with the basics. There's a pun in there somewhere. It was not intended. I also add one final little tweak. Since the cars leave skid marks when they corner, and the surface is derived directly from what's displayed on screen, I use this to give a little more grip when the player is directly over an existing skid mark, to simulate the track rubbering in and add a little unpredictability. I mean, we really need that level of simulation fidelity here. With a solid foundation, or at least a foundation no worse than the average 1930s house, I can now move on to the first thing I need for my AI. Checkpoints. Velocity has the classic four checkpoint system I also used in Oval Racer no matter what the shape of track. Now, you might be able to guess why that will be a problem, indeed multiple problems, but I'll start with the first one. The AI just doesn't really know where to go. It doesn't know where corners start or end. We need more checkpoints. I could just add them to the built-in track, you know, hard code them in basic, but this is an opportunity to do something clever, to nerd snipe myself further and use a similar system to the tracks in Revs to allow for more variety and challenge. Now, for those of you who don't habitually watch videos about the data storage internals of ancient Jeff Crammond games, and I have to say you're missing out there, 
This means breaking the track up into segments which each control where it goes next. For these simple tracks, I only need to track three variables per segment, the length, the change in angle over that segment, and the change in width, so I can make sections of track narrower or wider. Having made that decision, the data structure informs the algorithm, and indeed by the time I've written some test code to see how I can add, remove, and manipulate sections, I've pretty much written the track editor. And you can tell how much I'm enjoying this by how I'm making programmer-esque statements like, Ooh, the data structure informs the algorithm, as if I know what's going on, and aren't just hacking together a big mess out of QBasic the way I always did it. Some things just never change. Now, unless I'm going for some sort of retro-futuristic vibe, this graphics code isn't going to work in-game, but I realise that if I have a set of points defining the edge of the track, I can use the polygon rendering code I built for Oval Racer to render these as filled triangles. This works immediately on the first attempt, and I don't forget that QBasic's default is to pass variables to subroutines by reference and thus make an awful mess of it and spend most of an evening scratching my head. Ugh. It was less than half of the evening, right? like definitely not most, but only a few hours. Now since I'm already calculating normals to get the track edges, I can add a little bit of code to extend these and draw some more polygons and jazz up Velocity's rather plain looking tracks by adding curbs on the edges of turns. A quick little subroutine to export all of these things as data statements, ready to use in the game code, and I can spend some time building tracks. However, Remember that conversation about checkpoints? I have now rendered the game almost unplayable, because while it has an assortment of different tracks to choose from, they're all using that old system, based on just four checkpoints at each edge of the screen. But, you know, I can fix that. My track drawing routine has the centre point and width of every segment of track, so I could use those to derive checkpoints which both make sure the player isn't skimming across the grass cutting corners, and also, crucially, given the aim of this exercise, I've not forgotten that, tell my AI code I might write where it needs to go next. And then I just need to keep track of which checkpoint the car should be aiming at, increment that number within the area of influence, and update the lap counter and go back to checkpoint zero after the last one. A little racing around with this rather fetching debug output, and I'm happy that I've checked the first item off my list. Better tracks. Done. It's time for AI. Well no, it's time to fix all the places I assumed there would only ever be one car to draw or update statistics for. Then it'll be time for AI. No, wait. Because drawing more than one car exposes a pile of flaws in the drawing code, well done me, and if I'm fixing that I may as well refactor the car variables into one type and then that exposes interesting things where bits of code assume the car hasn't been drawn yet and... Look, programming, it's fun, okay? It's an amazing endeavour, which is not just finding out all the little bits of mess you've left coming back to hurt you, like leaving Lego all over the floor. Man, I, I, I should have been a Lego channel. I'm just going to go and do that. Some time and a few failed attempts to record Lego videos later, it's time for AI. My first AI is going to be very simple. It's just going to accelerate constantly without ever changing direction. Now, this might not sound like much intelligence, but it's basically all the people who street race up my local dual carriageway do, and I'm at least making that limited level of intelligence artificial. Yeah, AI, just not very much A. Besides, the point isn't to be able to navigate a corner at this stage. This code only has one objective, to prove that Velocity is capable of calculating physics for all of these cars. Here it is. The sum total of my do AI routine. Let's test it out, and also get rid of this crane without destroying it. Now let's test it out, having demonstrated exactly the problem I wanted to avoid. I still have bits of Lego. I don't want to lose that. Fine. Oh, what's going on with the code? Oh yeah, okay, fine. I'll call that a qualified success. Now my AI cars didn't leave any earmarks on the grass, which should have happened, but that turns out to just be a dumb copy and paste error. Because I haven't used the same name of iteration variable across all functions which process cars, and yeah, it's a good job that programming 
isn't my professional actual day job, isn't it? Oh, yeah, right. But now I have the AI hooked up to the physics engine, I ought to make them a little more I than their current lead-footed single-minded tendencies. And I'm going to start by having them head directly to the next checkpoint, and this will almost certainly produce an over-focused, excessively wiggly AI. But we have to start somewhere, and since I fear this is going to go about as well as someone in a Mustang leaving a car some coffee event, I'm going to drop down to just one enemy car while I tune this. This is where I discover that checkpoints aren't being processed by the AI. But with that fixed, I get an AI which can drive extremely badly around a track until it traps itself because it keeps asking change direction for impossible directions. Preventing it from making these impossible decisions gets it to... Oh, y you know, at least it completes the race. Does something. What's going wrong here is that the AI has no ability to sensibly prioritise corrections. It will always try to drive up in preference to fixing any other problem, for example, even if it's only one pixel away vertically and a lot of pixels away horizontally. What I need is for it to try to correct the biggest distance to the next checkpoint first. And doing this results in an AI which is now recognisably having a go at driving the track. It still has a tendency to drive along the edge of the glass, but it's doing a job, and when I take into account the delta to the next checkpoint afterward, that helped give the AI a little more focus. But now it's starting to struggle with the idea that the car doesn't instantly do what it wants, instead it slides around. Hashtag physics. I have my plans to deal with this, but for now I'm going to apply a simple algorithm. If the delta to the next checkpoint in the direction we were originally heading is small when we make a turn, come off the throttle to make that turn tighter. But I'm on the wrong track here. My simple little algorithmic AI is falling into the trap so many AIs fall into. It's designed to minimise the distance to the next checkpoint, and it does that the laziest, easiest way possible. As long as it's somewhere on the track, it can always minimise that distance by heading along said track, because that's the biggest distance it can see, even if that means driving along the edge of the grass and making far too many turns. On top of this, it still doesn't understand that the car's skid, so when it does correct, it often overshoots and crashes off the track. What I need is for it to plan, and not in the destroy all humans sense. At any point in a game of velocity, you have six options. You can turn in two of the possible four cardinal directions, you can carry on in the way you're going, and for each of these you can be on or off the throttle. My AI needs to guess where each of these options will place the car, based on current speed and direction, and then work out which will bring it closest to the next few checkpoints. To start with, I teach it to drive at low speed, because this makes any routing problems apparent, and I can see this is smartly choosing the shortest path around the track, but it's doing it almost too well. It's driving along in the grass, and every once in a while it skips a checkpoint, so I need to apply an extra penalty for any routes which get too far off the edge of the track, even if they optimise the minimum distance to the next three checkpoints. But at this point I also realise the checkpoints being triggered before the AI gets to the point it's trying to use for navigation is causing it to look too far ahead, causing some of that corner-skipping behaviour. So I fix things for the checkpoints to have slightly different trigger points relative to their location, and finally, my AI starts driving a reasonable route. Now it's not aware yet how much slower turning multiple times in a row is, but I'm happy that it's trying to build a sensible racing line and sort of do the right thing meaning the more it understands about this well, the better it will get at navigating it. I need the AI to be better at making predictions, so it's time for a test version which attempts to guess where a change in direction will land after a few frames. And I start by tidying up some unrelated things in the menu, because I have absolutely zero focus, but then I do get to add some new temporary code. When the player changes direction, the game will try to predict what will happen a few frames later, and then display it on screen, so I can see what I'm going to be putting inside the AI's brain. The first iteration of this shows how far off those predictions are once we're moving fast enough to skid, so I need to factor those slides in. Which that it doesn't help. Even though my car is passing right through the point I'm predicting, it's still not a good AI. Tweaking parameters, I'm in exactly the same trap as I was with the inaccurate predictions. Either I have an AI which is fast, but struggles with complex tracks, or I have one which constantly changes direction as it obsesses about not being in exactly the right place. Or, you know, if neither of those suit, I can have one which makes beelines across the grass as it ignores the next checkpoint in favour of optimising for one that can several corners ahead. And the problem there is that I'm trying to make a decision based on one point, when a human player would be considering the path through the next section of track, and 
With such a simple physics engine, I could have my AI do exactly that. Calculate the possible paths, then select the one which gets closest to going through all of the next checkpoints. A bit of tweaking and some more debug displays, and now what's in the AI's brain is starting to feel like what's in my brain. Maybe minus some regret about that weekend I spent drinking a mixture of knockoff Baileys and creme de cacao. I'll code that regret later, because finally the AI is putting up a decent and vaguely human-like race. The only thing it's still doing wrong is making multiple turns to trim its line, causing the car to slow down dramatically, but I should be able to solve this by preventing the AI from making those multiple turns in short succession and instead let it use the throttle if it needs to trim a trajectory while the car is sliding. Some fiddling around with how close to the checkpoint the car needs to get and adding some penalties for things like going on the grass, and I finally have an AI which does what I want. It's a competitive racer and drives good lines, but isn't immune to making the occasional mistake and letting some of the cars get out of control. Sometimes it even gets far enough off track that it has to go back and recover a skipped checkpoint. And it can even navigate the most terrifying road structure a driver in the Velocity world can encounter. A diagonal straight. There are just a few things left to correct. Firstly, I have no collision logic. Now, I don't want to make this complicated. It's complicated enough already. So I just had a very simple routine which checks if each car is in another car's collision box, and if so, knocks it back and applies a speed penalty. Now this won't work with multiple cars in the same space, but it's kind of fine for resolving the AI's attempts to drive over its fellow track users and stopping the player ignoring all road etiquette entirely. Surprisingly, with all this AI, there's still no detection of who actually won the race. But that's an easy correction, we can have a little end of race screen before going back to the main menu. It's Rudimentary, but at least there's something to race for now. And speaking of going back to that main menu, it could do with a bit of an upgrade. Nothing too wild, so I'm keeping the same simple text-based front end, just making it a little more user-friendly and giving the player an idea of what the car they'll be driving looks like and its stats. I also allow choosing the number of AI cars, since with Q-basic efficiency being what it is, we want to give some chance of this game being able to run on a slower computer. And finally, I get round to fixing that very first problem I mentioned. Yes, that drawing all the cars to capture them into an array problem. Instead, I could just write the contents of that array directly to data statements and skip the intermediate drawing step. Finally, velocity loads instantly, and I don't need any sort of loading screen, no matter how well pro I might have thought they were back when velocity was originally written. Well, there's quite a lot of repeated data here, and I could run and encode it, but I'll live with it for... No, okay, fine, I didn't live with it because I saw a technical challenge, and there goes another hour or so of precious free time. I think I'm beginning to relive how teenage me decided this might be a better career option than what came out of Cascade, although since 90s Cascade tended to suggest careers like waste receptacle designer and tweezer repair technician, that's a pretty low bar to clear. And this, really, that's the point of doing this. I'm reaching back into the past and making the game which was in my head back in 1997. Making something which could conceivably have been made at the time on the hardware I had access to using techniques I reasonably might have learnt, had QBasic not disappeared from the school computers only a few months later. And what was in my head, you know, it's a pretty playable game too. Yeah, the janky network play in a room full of computers might have felt more like the future at a time when stringing a null modem cable across the room was a recent memory, but adding some computer players and the most basic of win-lose scenarios has me regularly setting out to tweak something and end up just playing my own game, even if the AI does occasionally miss a checkpoint and do a loop around it or hey, I do that too. Hashtag realism, from a game which even simulates the track rubbering out. And I hope you enjoyed this further diversion into my weird back catalogue of old files and there will probably be a link to the updated version of Velocity somewhere in the description for all three of the people dedicated enough to go and poke around in the code and fix my terrible AI with a one-line change that takes them about ten minutes. But, you know, at least I had fun. See you for the next one. Oh, what did I... did I... how much did I break this crane? No, 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 I seem to have fixed it okay. I think there's... what's, what's the boom doing over there? Sorted. Bye.